Scientists suggest that water creatures like sharks often bite people out of curiosity. But is that the case? Who would even risk their safety just to satisfy such curiosity? In this video, we explore what happens when a great white shark, driven by curiosity, leaps onto a pleasure yacht. Join us to discover the dramatic events that followed. The sun hung high above the turquoise waters off the coast of South Africa, casting a golden sheen over the gently rocking waves. A high-end yacht cut through the water with effortless grace, its sleek lines and polished surfaces gleaming in the midday sun. The vessel, chartered by friends seeking luxury and adventure, was outfitted with every imaginable amenity. Lush seating areas, a fully stocked bar, and a sun deck with plush loungers promised relaxation and indulgence for its occupants. On board, the atmosphere was one of leisure and exhilaration. The friends, a diverse group with a shared love for the finer things in life, lounged on the deck, their laughter mingling with the gentle lapping of the ocean against the yacht's hull. The occasional clink of ice against crystal glasses punctuated their conversation as they sipped colorful cocktails, each meticulously crafted by the yacht's skilled crew. The yacht's crew, impeccably dressed and attentive, moved with practiced ease, ensuring their guests' every need was met. They exchanged knowing glances and quiet words of professional camaraderie as they navigated the vessel through the pristine waters, keeping a watchful eye on the horizon. Unbeknownst to the guests and crew, the tranquil scene was about to shatter. Below the surface, the ocean concealed a formidable predator. A great white shark measuring over 15 feet in length prowled the waters with a predatory grace. Its presence was undetectable to those above the surface, hidden by the ocean's depths and the playful movements of smaller marine life. The shark's senses were finely tuned to its surroundings, detecting the vibrations and sounds emanating from the yacht. As it drew closer, its curiosity and instinct led it to investigate the source of the disturbance. The warm currents, the scent of cocktails, and the sight of the yacht were irresistible. It surged upwards with a powerful thrust, breaking the surface with explosive force. In an instant, the serene afternoon was shattered by a colossal splash. The great white breached the water, its massive body arching out of the ocean in a dramatic display of raw power. The beast landed with a thunderous crash onto the yacht's deck, sending a shockwave of chaos through the vessel. The sheer force of the impact caused the yacht to tilt precariously, its starboard side dipping dangerously low into the water. Panic erupted as the yacht lurched, throwing passengers and crew into disarray. Cocktails and glasses flew through the air, spilling across the deck. Loungers and deck chairs were overturned, scattering their occupants. The shock of the shark's arrival led to frantic scrambling, as everyone struggled to maintain balance and assess the unfolding disaster. The Great White thrashed wildly, disoriented and enraged by its sudden confinement. Its massive jaws snapped open and shut with a menacing clack, teeth gleaming in the sunlight. The shark's powerful tail flailed against the deck, causing further damage and instability. Each violent movement exacerbated the chaos, with furniture and belongings being smashed or tossed overboard. The yacht's crew, seasoned professionals trained for emergencies, sprang into action. They rapidly assessed the situation, their faces set in determined lines. The captain, a grizzled veteran with years of maritime experience, barked orders, directing the crew to act quickly and decisively. One crew member grabbed a fire extinguisher, its bright red casing contrasting sharply with the shark's white body. He approached the thrashing predator cautiously, aiming the extinguisher's nozzle at the shark to disorient and deter it. The foam sprayed across the deck, creating a frothy mess and obscuring the shark's vision. But it did little to calm the beast. Another crew member threw a length of rope towards the shark, trying to entangle its powerful tail or create a barrier between it and the rest of the yacht. The rope tangled around the shark's fins momentarily but the creature's strength and violent movement soon caused it to snap free. Though terrified, the guests were not completely helpless. They took whatever they could find in their immediate vicinity. Deck chairs were wielded like shields, and towels were used desperately to keep the shark away. Despite their best efforts, the chaos was overwhelming. The deck was littered with debris, and the air was filled with the sharp, acrid smell of the fire extinguisher's foam, mingling with the salty tang of the ocean.
Amidst the turmoil, the captain and crew worked tirelessly, coordinating their efforts with a calm urgency. They used makeshift tools and strategic planning to guide the shark toward the boat's edge. The shark's relentless thrashing hindered the crew's efforts, but they persevered, determined to prevent further damage and ensure the safety of everyone aboard. The struggle between man and beast seemed endless. The yacht's tilt worsened, and the ocean threatened to engulf the vessel. The friends and crew alike were pushed to their limits, each second stretching into what felt like an eternity. The shark's relentless attempts to free itself only intensified the problematic situation. Finally, as the crew continued their desperate maneuvers, a breakthrough occurred. One crew member guided the shark towards the stern using a makeshift spear from a boat hook. With a final concerted effort, they maneuvered the shark to the edge of the deck. Exhausted and disoriented, the massive predator finally slid towards the water. With a final powerful surge, the shark slipped off the deck and back into the ocean. Its massive body disappeared beneath the waves, leaving behind a battered and shaken yacht. The water settled, and the yacht's tilt slowly corrected as the vessel regained balance. The aftermath of the encounter was a scene of devastation. The deck was strewn with broken furniture, shattered glass, and remnants of the frantic struggle. The yacht's crew, though visibly exhausted and shaken, began assessing the damage and ensuring the safety of their guests. Still in shock, the friends looked around at the wreckage, their luxury vacation having taken a turn for the harrowing. Now, back in its ocean realm, the great white shark swam away with an indignant grace. Its unexpected venture onto the yacht had left an indelible mark, both on the vessel and in the minds of those who had witnessed the encounter. The Florida Keys, renowned for their crystal-clear waters and vibrant marine life, provided the perfect backdrop for Tom's snorkeling adventure. It was an early morning in late summer, and the sun's rays sliced through the Azure Sea with an almost ethereal clarity. An enthusiastic marine life photographer, Tom had been looking forward to this excursion for weeks. He had meticulously prepared his camera gear, excited to capture the vivid hues of the coral reefs and the darting movements of the schools of fish. Tom had anchored his small boat just off the coast, where the coral formations created an underwater landscape of patterns and colors. After donning his snorkeling gear and checking his camera, he slipped into the water with practiced ease. The moment he submerged, he was enveloped by a serene, almost otherworldly silence, broken only by the gentle rhythm of his breathing through the snorkel and the occasional flick of his fins. The underwater world was a mesmerizing tapestry of life. Schools of small fish swirled around him, their bodies flashing like jewels. Brightly colored coral formations stretched beneath him, a vibrant expanse of pinks, oranges, and purples. Tom floated effortlessly, his camera poised to capture the perfect shot. He maneuvered closer to a particularly lively cluster of fish, their tiny bodies reflecting the sunlight in a dazzling display of colors. As he approached, Tom noticed a sleek shape darting through the water, its movement swift and purposeful. The barracuda, a formidable predator, cut through the water with an unsettling grace. Its elongated body, marked by silver scales and a fearsome set of teeth, was unmistakable. Tom's heart skipped a beat. He had read about barracudas and their reputation for aggression, especially when attracted by shiny objects. Unfortunately, his camera gear, which gleamed brightly under the water, had inadvertently caught the barracuda's attention. The barracuda's predatory instincts took over in the blink of an eye. The fish closed in with alarming speed, its jaws opening wide. Tom had no time to react. The barracuda's sharp teeth sank into his arm. The sensation of the bite was sudden and excruciating. It felt like an electric shock of pain radiating through his entire limb. The barracuda's teeth tore through flesh and muscle with relentless precision. Tom gasped, the pain blinding and immediate. Blood clouded the water around him, a dark, ominous red spreading like a morbid halo. The once serene and beautiful underwater world now seemed menacing and hostile. Panic set in as Tom's mind raced. He needed to return to the boat, but every stroke felt heavy and laborious. His arm throbbed violently, and each movement sent sharp spikes of pain through his body. Having taken its bite, the barracuda began to retreat, its predatory instinct satisfied for the moment. Tom could only hope it would not return. With every ounce of strength, he started swimming towards the boat. 
The water, once so inviting, now felt like an unrelenting barrier. His movements were erratic, driven by a primal fear of the unknown. The overwhelming pain made it difficult to concentrate on anything but the immediate goal of reaching the boat's safety. As he swam, he could hear the rush of his blood pounding in his ears. The boat, anchored a short distance away, seemed to move further away with every stroke. Tom's breaths came in ragged gasps through the snorkel, his body trembling with effort and pain. The bright welcoming sight of the boat was now a beacon of hope and he forced himself to keep moving despite the debilitating pain in his arm and the weakness that was beginning to seep into his limbs. When Tom finally reached the boat, the crew was quick to react. The relief of having solid ground beneath him was a small comfort compared to the agony he felt. The crew worked swiftly to pull him aboard, their hands steady despite the situation's urgency. Tom could barely focus on their movements, his vision swimming in and out of focus as the pain and shock took their toll. Once aboard, the crew immediately assessed his injuries. The bite wound was deep, the gash stretching across his arm and oozing blood. The crew members acted with practiced efficiency, administering first aid. Tom's arm was cleaned and bandaged, but the severity of the wound was apparent. He could feel the throbbing pain as they worked, a constant reminder of the close brush with disaster he had just experienced. As the boat returned to shore, Tom lay on the deck, the adrenaline beginning to wear off, replaced by a profound, all-encompassing fatigue. The pain was persistent, but there was also a deep relief. The encounter had been terrifying, a stark reminder of the unpredictability and danger that lurked beneath the water's surface. Tom's thoughts were a jumble of pain, fear, and a newfound respect for the power of the ocean and its inhabitants. Once back on shore, Tom was taken to the hospital where the wound was properly treated. The deep bite had inflicted serious damage, and Tom would need time to recover. The doctors treated the wound, cleaned it thoroughly, and administered antibiotics to prevent infection. Tom was advised to rest and keep the wound clean, and his arm was immobilized to ensure proper healing. The experience left Tom with a lasting impression of the ocean's raw power and unpredictability. The vibrant coral reefs and colorful fish he had admired so eagerly now seemed to him as a facade, hiding the latent dangers beneath. His once joyful snorkeling adventure had transformed into a sobering lesson in respect for marine life's wild and unpredictable nature. Tom's recovery was slow but steady. He had to adjust to the limitations imposed by his injury, both physically and emotionally. The pain and the trauma of the attack lingered, but so did a deep appreciation for the beauty and danger of the underwater world. The Indian Ocean, stretching out under the relentless sun, is a realm where mystery and beauty intermingle with danger. A seasoned marine biologist, Sarah Clark, ventured into this enigmatic world with excitement and caution. The expedition had been meticulously planned to explore the deep waters, a venture that promised to yield invaluable insights into the ocean's hidden denizens. As Sarah prepared for her dive, the weight of her equipment pressed heavily on her, a reminder of the responsibility she bore. Her deep-sea suit was designed to withstand the immense pressures that would greet her as she descended. With her oxygen tank securely strapped and her dive knife sheathed at her side, she adjusted her mask and checked her gauges one final time. The ocean's surface was a dazzling sapphire, but beneath it lay an abyssal world that few had ever witnessed. The descent was methodical and uneventful, until Sarah reached the edge of the known world. At this depth, the ocean became a vast expanse of ink-black water, punctuated only by the occasional flicker of bioluminescence. Sarah's focus was unwavering, her eyes scanning the depths for any sign of movement. In this oppressive darkness, Sarah's senses sharpened, her instincts alerting her to a disturbance just beyond the reach of her lights. Her heart skipped a beat as she noticed a massive, undulating shadow moving through the water. It was unlike anything she had seen before, an immense form with a slow, deliberate movement. The shadow's presence was unsettling, a reminder of how little control she had over this alien environment. The first clue of danger came with the subtle shift in the water's current. Sarah's breath quickened as she adjusted her headlamp to illuminate the area more thoroughly. The creature's outline became clearer, revealing the unmistakable shape of a giant squid. The enormity of the creature was awe-inspiring and terrifying 
Its body was a colossal, gelatinous mass, and its long, sinuous tentacles writhed with a predatory grace. The squid had spotted her, and there was no mistaking its intent. The tentacles, each lined with powerful suction cups, began to move with purpose. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest as the squid extended its arms, reaching out with a speed that belied its size. The moment of recognition was critical. A split-second realization that she was no longer a mere observer, but a target. The squid's tentacles surged forward swiftly and deliberately. Sarah initially intended to retreat, but the deep-sea environment offered little room for maneuver. The tentacles wrapped around her, gripping her like iron bands. Each suction cup constantly clung to her suit, pulling her towards the squid's massive beak. Panic surged through Sarah as she felt the immense strength of the squid. Her mind raced, her breathing becoming erratic as she struggled to comprehend the gravity of her situation. The creature's beak, hidden beneath the folds of its body, loomed closer with each passing second. The beak, capable of delivering a fatal bite, was a constant, menacing presence. The struggle was immediate and intense. Sarah's attempts to pry the tentacles off were met with minimal success. The squid's grip was unyielding, its strength far surpassing her own. Each movement of her limbs seemed only to tighten the squid's hold. Desperation fueled her actions as she fumbled for her dive knife, her hands slick with sweat, and the slippery, slimy texture of the squid's arms. The pressure at these depths was unforgiving, compounding the difficulty of her struggle. Every second felt like an eternity as Sarah fought to maintain her composure. Her air supply was dwindling, the gauge ticking down with relentless precision. Her movements grew more frantic, driven by the dual threats of the squid's beak and the encroaching pressure. With every ounce of strength she could muster, Sarah finally managed to grasp her dive knife. The blade was her last hope though small compared to the squid's massive limbs. She swung the knife with all her might, slashing at the tentacles that bound her. The initial contact was met with resistance, but the squid's grip faltered as she continued her assault. The struggle continued in a disorienting blur of motion. The tentacles recoiled, their grip weakening as Sarah's knife found its mark. She seized the opportunity to wriggle free, her movements desperate and uncoordinated. Sensing its prey's escape, the squid released its hold and retreated into the dark abyss. The urgency of her situation overshadowed Sarah's sense of relief. The immediate danger had passed, but the depth and pressure were still formidable threats. Her ascent began as a frantic race against time, each stroke of her fins propelling her towards the surface. The oppressive darkness of the deep seemed to close in around her, making every movement a test of endurance. As she ascended, the pressure began to ease, but the physical and emotional toll of the encounter weighed heavily on her. Her breathing was ragged, her body aching from the struggle. The depths of the ocean, once a realm of intrigue and wonder, had become a treacherous expanse fraught with danger. Finally, the first glimmers of light began to penetrate the water, signaling the approach of the surface. Sarah's relief was palpable as the familiar blue of the ocean above came into view. With renewed determination, she pushed herself upwards, her ascent becoming a race to escape the darkness and its perils. Breaking through the surface, Sarah gasped for air, her lungs filling with the life-giving oxygen she had longed for. Though harsh and blinding after the dark depths, the sun was a welcome sight. The safety of the surface world was a stark contrast to the terror she had just escaped. Sarah clung to the side of the boat, her body trembling with exhaustion and adrenaline. The encounter with the giant squid had been a harrowing test of her skill and resolve. As she was lifted aboard, she could hardly believe she had survived such a close call with one of the ocean's most enigmatic and formidable predators. On a warm morning in Hawaii, the sun bathed the ocean in a golden hue as waves rolled rhythmically against the shore. The surf spot, known for its expansive swells and pristine, crystal-clear waters, was a magnet for local and visiting surfers alike. Today was no exception. The beach was alive with laughter, water splashing, and the occasional shout of joy as surfers rode the waves with practiced ease. Among them was Kyle, a seasoned pro surfer known for his skill and fearless approach to the sport. His board, a sleek, polished piece of equipment, cut through the water precisely as he paddled out, searching for the perfect wave. Kyle's movements were fluid and confident reflecting countless hours spent mastering the art of surfing. 
His sun-kissed skin and lean, muscular frame bore witness to years of dedication and passion for the ocean. As he reached the optimal spot, Kyle paused and surveyed the horizon, noting the more giant waves forming further out. He adjusted his position and began to paddle with renewed determination. The waves, as they grew, promised an exhilarating ride. Little did Kyle know that beneath the serene surface, danger was lurking, waiting for the opportune moment to strike. The ocean, usually a place of exhilaration and freedom, held its secrets beneath its calm facade. Kyle noticed a dark shadow rushing beneath him as he prepared for the next wave. It was a peculiar sight, starkly contrasting the vibrant blue surrounding him. The shadow was not just a fleeting shape, it was large and its movement was purposeful. Instinctively, Kyle's senses heightened, but before he could fully grasp the situation, the shadow surged upward with alarming speed. A massive tiger shark, one of the ocean's most formidable predators, exploded out of the water with a force that knocked Kyle off his board. The impact was jarring, and the shock of being thrown into the water was immediate and disorienting. Kyle's heart raced as he flailed in the water, struggling to regain his bearings. The shark, driven by hunger and aggression, was not done with its attack. It circled back with a predatory precision, its eyes gleaming with a menacing hunger. In the chaos, Kyle's first instinct was survival. His mind raced as he tried to comprehend the gravity of the situation. The shark, a fearsome creature with rows of razor-sharp teeth, lunged with terrifying speed, clamping its jaws onto Kyle's leg. The searing pain was immediate and intense, starkly contrasting the relatively gentle waves he had been riding moments earlier. The force of the bite was so strong it felt as though the shark's teeth were embedded deep into his flesh, each movement of the creature amplifying the agony. The cold water around Kyle quickly began to turn red, staining the clear blue with a stark reminder of the severity of his injury. The shark's powerful jaws and relentless grip dragged him downward, the pressure of the water adding to the immense pain. Kyle, despite the excruciating pain, fought instinctively. He thrashed violently, trying to free his leg from the shark's unyielding grasp. His surfboard, once a tool of enjoyment, now became a weapon of defense. He swung it with all his might, aiming for the shark's head, hoping to disorient or at least deter the beast. The shark, unrelenting, seemed impervious to Kyle's efforts. Each swing of the board, each punch to the shark's head, was met with a relentless determination from the predator. Kyle's strength began to wane as the struggle continued. The water around him churned violently, a chaotic mix of red and blue as the fight persisted. The sensation of being dragged deeper into the ocean's abyss was overwhelming, the pressure on his leg increasing with every second. As Kyle's energy began to ebb, adrenaline fueled his resolve. His survival instincts, honed by years of surfing and extreme sports, kicked in. He focused on targeting the shark's eyes and gills, the predator's most vulnerable points. He hoped to inflict enough pain with each strike to drive the shark away. The struggle was physical and mental, a desperate fight against an overwhelmingly powerful adversary. Just as Kyle's strength seemed to be at its limit, a flash of movement caught his eye. Another surfer arrived, drawn by Kyle's commotion and distress signals. The newcomer, an experienced surfer with a calm demeanor and quick reflexes, assessed the situation with a clarity that was almost miraculous amidst the chaos. Without hesitation, the surfer moved precisely, aiding Kyle in getting onto the board. The moment of intervention was critical. The tiger shark, sensing the change in the dynamics, hesitated momentarily. With a steady hand and focused effort, the newcomer managed to get Kyle onto the board and began paddling with all the strength he could muster. The shark, still lurking, seemed to retreat slightly, perhaps sensing the shift in the situation or simply exhausted from its prolonged assault. With Kyle on the board, the immediate danger had not passed, but the risk of further attacks diminished. The struggle to reach the shore was intense. Every stroke of the paddle was a battle against the rolling waves and the growing distance from the safety of the land. Kyle's injuries were severe, and the sight of his bloodied leg painted a grim picture of the ordeal. Each wave that struck them felt like a test of endurance as the newcomer fought against the sea to bring Kyle to safety. The approach to shore was grueling. The adrenaline and the sense of urgency drove the efforts, but the physical exhaustion was palpable. 
Once a source of thrill and joy, the waves seemed like an insurmountable barrier. Every push forward was met with resistance, and every wave that crashed against them felt like a setback. Finally, after an eternity, they reached the shallower waters near the shore. The relief was palpable, but the danger was far from over. With Kyle in tow, the surfer struggled to get him to dry land. The scene on the beach was one of controlled chaos, as lifeguards and bystanders rushed to assist. Kyle's leg, bloodied and mangled, was a stark reminder of the peril he had faced. Emergency responders quickly took over, attending to Kyle's injuries with a professionalism that belied the situation's urgency. The leg was carefully bandaged and Kyle was lifted onto a stretcher. The pain was intense, but the relief of being out of the water and the knowledge that he was receiving medical attention provided a semblance of comfort. As Kyle was rushed to the hospital, the gravity of the incident began to sink in. The surfing community, accustomed to the occasional close call, was now confronted with a stark reminder of the ocean's unpredictable nature. The thrill of surfing, while exhilarating, came with inherent risks that were often underestimated. The attack had left a mark on Kyle and everyone who shared his passion for the waves. Joe had been fishing in the shallow waters of the Gulf of Mexico for decades. His boat, a weathered but reliable craft, bobbed gently on the tranquil sea, surrounded by the calm of the morning. Joe's hands, calloused from years of handling fishing gear, expertly worked the reel as he cast his line with practiced ease. The gentle ripple of the water seemed to whisper promises of a good catch, and Joe was in his element, savoring the moment's tranquility. The Gulf of Mexico was known for its rich marine life, and Joe knew the shallow waters were home to various fish. He had hoped for a large one today, and as the minutes passed, his patience was rewarded. The tip of his rod began to bend, indicating a sizable catch. Joe's heart quickened with excitement. He tightened his grip on the reel and started to pull in his prize. Initially, the resistance felt like that of a hefty fish, and Joe adjusted his stance, preparing for a spirited battle. However, as he continued to reel in, the pull grew stronger and more erratic. The line became taut, and Joe felt a powerful tug that threatened to pull him off balance. His experienced instincts warned him that this was no ordinary catch. The water around the boat rippled violently, and Joe's initial excitement turned to alarm. The powerful, unrelenting force from below seemed almost alive. He braced himself, bracing for the potential fight that lay ahead. Then he realized the situation rapidly escalated beyond anything he had encountered. The line snapped with a jarring jerk, and Joe's heart raced as he struggled to maintain control. In a moment of realization, he noticed the distinct silhouette of a massive stingray below the surface. Its broad wing-like fins flapped frantically, causing the water to churn and foam around it. The stingray's size was awe-inspiring. With a six-foot wingspan, it was an imposing presence in the otherwise serene waters. Joe's immediate reaction was to release the line, but the stingray had already become entangled. It thrashed violently, and its powerful movements caused the boat to tilt dangerously. The stingray, disturbed by the hook, had become increasingly agitated, and its erratic movements posed a significant threat. As the stingray's struggles intensified, Joe realized with mounting horror that the creature's barb was dangerously close to him. The venomous barb, capable of causing severe injury, was now a looming threat. Panic surged through Joe as he attempted to free himself from the entangled line. The stingray's frantic movements pulled the line taut, and Joe was dragged towards the boat's edge. Every instinct screamed at him to escape the situation, but the stingray's powerful pulls and erratic behavior made maneuvering nearly impossible. Joe's hands fumbled with the line, his fingers slick with sweat. The adrenaline coursing through him made every movement seem both urgent and clumsy. The boat continued to tilt, and Joe could feel the cold bite of fear as he realized he was losing his balance. The stingray surged forward with a final, desperate lunge, and in an instant Joe was no longer on the boat. The force of the stingray's pull had dragged him overboard. The world became a chaotic blur of water and motion as Joe was plunged into the gulf. The realization of his difficult situation quickly overshadowed the initial shock of the cold water. Under the surface, Joe struggled to orient himself. The stingray was still nearby, its mighty wings beating the water in an attempt to escape. The visibility was poor and the water was filled with debris from the earlier struggle. 
Joe's mind raced as he tried to assess the immediate danger. The stingray was imposing, its broad body moving with alarming speed. Its barb, a deadly weapon, was a constant threat. Desperately, Joe fought to free himself from the line that still connected him to the stingray. The line was tangled around his legs, and every movement tightened its grip. With determination, Joe reached for the knife strapped to his belt. His fingers, trembling with fear and cold, fumbled for the knife's handle. The knife was an essential tool for a fisherman, but now it was his only hope of escape. The stingray's movements were erratic and unpredictable. It darted and swerved, making it difficult for Joe to maintain a safe distance. Every time he thought he had managed to free himself, the line tightened again and the stingray's thrashing pulled him closer. The water around him was a murky swirl of motion, and Joe's lungs burned with the effort of holding his breath. Joe drew the knife, its blade glinting faintly in the dim light filtering through the water. With a desperate, practiced motion, he slashed at the line. The tension of the line was a constant threat, pulling him inexorably towards the stingray. As he cut through the line, the stingray's movements became less erratic, but the danger was far from over. Now freed from the line but still agitated, the stingray swam away with powerful strokes. Joe, gasping for air and disoriented from the struggle, pushed himself towards the surface. The water above seemed distant and unreachable. Every moment felt like an eternity. The stingray's silhouette faded into the depths as Joe focused on his immediate survival. The water surface was a welcome sight as Joe emerged, his breaths coming in ragged gasps. The sun above starkly contrasted the cold, dark depths he had just escaped. His heart pounded in his chest, and the fear that had gripped him under the water began to give way to a profound relief. The stingray had disappeared into the depths, but its presence had left a lasting impact on Joe. As he floated on the surface, Joe's mind raced with the realization of how close he had come to a fatal encounter. The stingray's power and the danger it posed were humbling. He had always respected the sea and its creatures, but this experience had given him a new understanding of the hidden threats that lurked beneath the surface. Now a distant and precarious refuge, the boat was a beacon of safety. With a renewed sense of urgency, Joe swam towards it, each stroke feeling like a battle against the residual effects of fear and exhaustion. The boat seemed to inch closer with every stroke, and Joe's determination to reach it fueled his efforts. Finally, Joe managed to pull himself back aboard the boat. His body was cold and drenched, his hands shaking as he clambered over the edge. The relief of being back on solid ground was immense, but the experience had shaken him. The Stingray's attack had been a brutal reminder of nature's power and the sea's unpredictable dangers. Joe sat on the deck, his breathing gradually steadying as he gazed at the now tranquil waters of the Gulf. The encounter replayed in his mind. The Stingray had disappeared, but its impact lingered. What was once a familiar and trusted friend, the Gulf of Mexico had revealed a side that commanded vigilance and deep respect. Lisa relished the solitude and serenity of her early morning swims in the chilly waters off the coast of California. The sun had barely crested the horizon and the ocean stretched before her, a vast expanse of shimmering blue that seemed to promise a day of peaceful solitude. Lisa was an experienced open water swimmer accustomed to the ocean's unpredictability. Her years of training had made her comfortable with the occasional encounter with marine life. Dolphins, rays, even the fleeting glimpse of a shark's fin, though such encounters were rare and typically benign. Her familiarity with these waters provided a sense of security that allowed her to push beyond the constraints of a pool and into the boundless expanse of the open sea. However, as Lisa continued her swim, a subtle shift in the water around her caught her attention. The sensation was faint at first, almost invisible like the gentle caress of seaweed brushing against her leg. She glanced downward, expecting to see a harmless tangle of kelp, or perhaps a small fish darting past. Instead, her eyes widened as a large, dark shape emerged from the depths, its sleek, powerful body moving with an almost predatory grace. The creature circled her, its presence now unmistakable. It was a sea lion, its bulbous eyes glinting with an eerie intelligence. While often regarded as playful and curious, sea lions have behaviors and territorial instincts that can turn dangerous, particularly during the mating season or when feeling threatened. 
Lisa's mind raced as she recalled the warnings and stories she had read about sea lion attacks. Although the animal's behavior seemed initially interesting, its growing proximity and hovering around her suggested a potential for aggression. Lisa tried to remain calm, her instincts guiding her to continue her strokes and avoid making any sudden erratic movements. She attempted to adjust her trajectory to distance herself from the sea lion. But before she could fully react, the sea lion lunged at her with surprising speed and force. Its jaws clamped down onto her thigh with a ferocity that sent a shockwave of pain through her body. The initial bite was like a fiery sting, a searing agony that radiated from her leg. The sea lion's powerful jaws tore through the skin, the sharp teeth digging deep and drawing blood. Lisa's body was instantly propelled into a state of panic. The creature's grip yanked her downward, pulling her beneath the surface in a disorienting whirl of water and shadow. Underwater, the world was a chaotic blur. The sea lion's weight and strength dominated the space around her, its thrashing movements churning the water and further disorienting Lisa. Each thrash seemed to amplify the pain in her leg, the pressure of its bite unrelenting. Her attempts to kick and punch at the sea lion felt futile against its sheer strength. Desperation surged through her as she fought to free herself, her limbs flailing in a frantic bid to escape the relentless attack. The struggle felt endless, a terrifying survival dance where every movement was crucial. Lisa's oxygen was depleted, and the cold water penetrated her core. Her vision narrowed to a tunnel of murky blue as she struggled to orient herself. Every instinct screamed at her to surface, to escape the predator's clutches, but the sea lion's grip held her in a vice-like grasp. Just as the world around her seemed to close in, the sea lion abruptly released its bite. Lisa's body shot upward, propelled by a mix of adrenaline and the natural buoyancy of the water. Her breaths came in sharp, ragged gasps as she broke through the surface, her head emerging into the cool, salty air. The sea lion circled nearby, its dark eyes watching her with a menacing gaze, but it did not immediately follow her ascent. With a renewed sense of urgency, Lisa fought through the pain and disorientation, propelling herself toward the shore with every ounce of strength she had left. Once a soothing expanse, the ocean now felt like a treacherous barrier between her and safety. The water around her was a frothy mix of her blood and the churned-up sand, a stark reminder of the violence she had just endured. Her strokes were labored, each movement a battle against the overwhelming exhaustion that threatened to pull her under. The distance to the shore seemed impossible, and the persistent ache in her leg made each stroke a reminder of the injury she had sustained. Her focus narrowed to the distant line of the shore, a faint promise of safety and relief that seemed to waver with each passing moment. As Lisa neared the shore, the pain in her leg intensified, a constant, throbbing reminder of the sea lion's bite. Her movements grew sluggish, her strength waning as the adrenaline began to wear off. Once a gentle caress, the waves felt like they were pushing against her, a relentless force trying to drag her back into the depths. Finally, with a last, desperate push, Lisa managed to drag herself onto the beach. Her body was trembling, her skin pale and clammy from the cold water and the shock of the attack. She lay on the sand, the once vibrant scene now a blur of pain and exhaustion. The next thing she knew was paramedics lifting her onto a stretcher. She could hear the urgent voices of the medics discussing her condition, but their words were blurred because of the critical condition she found herself in. The ride to the hospital was a haze of pain and confusion. The steady beeping of the heart monitor was the only thing anchoring her to reality. The paramedics worked swiftly, their faces tense as they monitored her vitals and administered fluids. By the time they arrived at the hospital, Lisa was barely conscious. Doctors and nurses swarmed around her, their movements efficient and precise. Voices overlapped as the medical team assessed her injuries, their urgency palpable. She was rushed into surgery to prevent further damage to her health. Hours later, Lisa awoke in a hospital bed, her body heavy and sore. The room was quiet. The only sound was the steady beeping of the heart monitor beside her. She was alive, but the road to recovery would be long and arduous. The attack was a harsh reminder that even seemingly friendly marine animals can become dangerous under the right circumstances.